All right, Grant, tell me when we're recording. I'm sitting in the bed. Let me sit up and get some good posture going here <laughs> so I won't be slouching through the whole thing. Tell me when we're recording and I'll get started. We're ready to go anytime you are. All right. Thank you, everybody, for jumping on. It is Friday Night Forex and Chill. It's August the 2nd. If you're not muted, please mute yourself. Um, until we stop to take some questions and answers because we are recording uh, and this is, will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow, sometime tomorrow afternoon. I thank you for joining us. Um, tomorrow, I would like to say tomorrow is my mother's birthday. She just passed away uh, the day before Mother's Day. So tonight I would like to dedicate this session of Forex and Children to my mommy, Annie. Um, you'll see her all over my Forex page. Uh, and my Facebook page tomorrow. Um, so just whisper a prayer for me and my family as we experience our, our first few months away from my mom and her first birthday away from her. But tonight we are going to cover market structure. Market structure is one of the most powerful ways to trade Forex. Before we get started, let me look and see who we got on here tonight. Thank you, Mike. Um, you guys post in the chat where you're where you're uh, logging in from tonight. I see my friend Rob from Florida on here. Thank you, Rob, for joining. One of my lifelong friends. His dad was my first boss. We got New York City, Afghanistan, Columbia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Thank you, Eric. Washington, Panama, Canada, Jamaica, Toronto, Trinidad, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee. Some more Chicago and New York in the house. Nigeria, Nigeria again. Aloha from Honolulu, Alabama, South Africa. We've got people from all over the world. Ohio, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, guys, we've got a Roll Tide fan in the house. Somebody shut the door. Trinidad and Tobago, Maryland, Montreal, LA, Memphis, some more Louisiana. All right, thank you guys for jumping in. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to start this a little bit elementary because we do have some people on here that it might be their first time being exposed to Forex and what we do, but I promise um, I, I don't take a long time to explain it because Forex really isn't that hard. You can do two things, you can buy or you can sell. And you know, when you pull that trigger, you are 50% right. And if you use proper risk management, you can be a six figure trader winning 50% of your trades. And uh, we're just gonna help you increase those odds of winning tonight by helping you find out and know exactly where you are in the market all right thank you i love you too mustafa love all my family here on forex and chill so we're going to look at all usd for those who don't know this is the australian dollar versus the us dollar what we do in foreign exchange is we trade one currency for another we follow these candles which are created by big institutions and big banks who are buying when it's going up and selling when it's going down. Now, those of you who've been following me almost a year now, you'll see I've made some changes in my trading strategy because when I first started this, I was learning myself. Forex and Chill was started because it was a bunch of people who wanted to become better traders. We did it together as a journey. It started out with three or four people, and sometimes we have well over 200 people join. But uh, a lot of you notice now I'm using the black and white candles. The reason I have switched to black and white candles with a gray background is because if you already trade Forex, and if you don't trade Forex, you need to know this, over 90% of trading is mental, it's, it's, it's mindset. And we are taught that when the market is green going up, we buy, and when it's red going down, we sell. So I'm gonna let you look at this right here and see the difference. You see the difference uh, mentally, I'm focused on whether I'm in a sell or whether I'm in a buy, instead of in the back of my mind, knowing the overall structure of this market. And so when I change back over to um, my gray, now I don't see all that noise in the market. Let me take these off real quick. Um, right here make these black so you you trade you know i really wanted to take them off is what i wanted to do you trade what makes sense to you um 
and what looks good to your eyes. You trade what you see. As a Forex trader, you should trade what you see, not what I see or what someone else sees. Even as um, when I was a novice trader, some of my biggest losses were going against what I saw in the market and following someone who was a six figure or seven figure trader because all of us see the market differently. Even though we're trying to get from point A to point B, some of us might see this a little bit differently. And that's why a lot of times I have guest traders on here because you never know who is going to give you that aha moment. Um, I teach to the best of my abilities and I teach the way I see the market, but some of my guests might see something differently that's going to give you that aha moment. And by bringing these guests on, it's also, you know, I learned this from one of my guest traders and um, it's really made a big difference in my trading. So let's look at all USD and determine whether we're going to buy or sell. And we're going to start from, we start what's called down, called top down analysis. We go from the top, which is the monthly, all the way to the bottom, which is the one minute. So if we're looking at a monthly chart, each one of these it might look like a stick to some of you, but it's called a candle. Each one of these candles represent a whole month of this pair in the market. You see some months you barely had any movement and some months you had a lot of movement. This is a good pair to trade for new traders because it's not extremely volatile. So you can get in the market without seeing a, a lot of movement like you would in volatility with a great British pound pair. So what I like to do again is top down analysis from my monthly down to my one minute uh, to tell you a little bit about the market. The market moves three ways, impulse, correction, and continuation. And this is when we are in a buy market. And we saw that right here, impulse, correction, and continuation. All right, we can also be in a sale market and we'll get the same type of action, impulse, correction, continuation, correction, and continuation. If you're not muted, please mute. We are recording and we want a good clean recording for the internet. So that's the three ways that the market moves, impulse, a correction, and a continuation. Now, if you get an impulse and you don't get a correction, you are not going to get a continuation. So even though most of us, we've been told the impulse is one of the most important things in the market, I, I like to preface that by saying, please pay a lot of attention to what comes after your impulse. Because if I get an impulse and I don't get a correction, I am not going to get a continuation. So I could be in a down market and if I don't get a correction, I'm not going to get a continuation. I'm going to get a reversal in the market. So just pay attention to your impulse and then what comes after. So now that we've determined how the market moves, let's mark up AUD, USD, starting from monthly, which is the whole entire uh, face of this chart right here, going all the way back to May 1993. So we got the whole lifespan of all USD right here in front of us from when we switched from paper trading to trading online. Now we are going to look at what are called our highs and our lows. So I'm going to start right here. Um, Grant, could you go through and uh, mute some people for me? Thanks. I'm going to take what is called a horizontal ray and I'm going to focus on the lowest point that I've been my swing low. This is the lowest point I've been and my swing high in the most recent months. Now, if I want to, I can draw this all the way back here and you will see we've had multiple touches of candles on this on the monthly and I could draw this one back here if I wanted to. And you would not be wrong. It's just whenever I'm looking at the market, I like to focus on where I am. Now, should I break this previous low? Then I'll look farther back to see. Um, just an example, if I break this low, then I know then my market is probably going to aim further down for this low. Then if it breaks that one, then look way back here. We could get an even further drop. But right now we want to know where we currently are in the market. So I'm going to focus on my swing low and my swing high. And I'm going to do this on my next two time frames. That was my monthly where each candle represents a month. Now I'm going to go down to my weekly 
where each candle represents a week and we can clean up our lines here a little bit. Um, this is the next thing that sticks out to me as a high and I can put that there. And I really don't need a low because it's coming down to my monthly low. So I really don't need another line right there. I'm gonna go down to my day and I can focus right here. And again, we're down at a monthly low, so I don't need another chart here, another uh, line here. Now, a lot of people have seen me in the past when I got to the daily, I, I told them we're gonna take this trend line and we're gonna box in the market. But we really don't need that. It's plain to see that we are in a downtrend. So I can delete that and I can go to an even smaller time frame and focus on where we are. Now, looking at this chart, we are 50 pips from the most recent monthly, weekly and daily low. And there's nothing telling me that we've had a reversal in the market. I would need a strong, remember I told you we need an impulse with the correction to get that continuation and we have not gotten that yet. So there's nothing telling me to start looking for a buy at this time. But I can look here and I'm gonna start paying attention to what type of price action I get here. It could get here, I would look for an impulse and my correction before I could get my continuation. All right, looking left, you're going to start focusing on swing highs and swing lows. So this would be my next swing high right here in this area. Um, I can draw here. This would be my next swing high area that I want to focus on. So what you can do to highlight that area is just focus on, we were in a downtrend and here is where it swung back to the high. So you can take the rectangle tool and just draw your little rectangle there so you will know when you get up to this area, you could see some possible what we call resistance where the market could hit this and bounce back and give us a rejection. Now, I'm just gonna take this off and I'm gonna go through this real fast without speaking so you can see how easy market structure is. I know where I am in the market without using any indicators. The only tool that I need is my eyes and I'm using a, a few things right here to just box in the market from the monthly all the way down to a lower time frame, focusing on swing highs and swing lows. Now, I already know where I am in the market just that fast. Within 30 seconds, I know where I'm in the market. You don't see that I've gotten near my previous uh, support area here at the bottom. You don't see that I've had any strong moves to the upside. So I'm clearly still in a downtrend. Now, if you feel feel like you need, I, I call these training wheels, the trend line. Um, you can get another correction and then a continuation to the downside. Then we're gonna pay close attention to what happens here because on the monthly, we have a reversal off that time zone. Uh, off that, that zone, we have on the weekly, a reversal off that area. And on the daily, we had a previous reversal, a strong reversal off that area. So this is our area of interest. This is the next target we are focusing on. If it gets here, like I tell people, it's not worth chasing these last few pips. Um, I had posted, this is our new Discord group for our team and we post charts and signals. And um, I'll take you back a few days ago. I had posted my chart on this pair telling my team, you know, if you're going to do anything, it's overall downtrend, don't buy it unless we see a clear reversal. And here's that chart before I told them it was going to pull back then drop. And if you go down to the next day, um, it did exactly what I predicted um, by my analysis. If you go through my Facebook page, uh, you'll see, I just want to cover a few trades that I took this week. If you're not following me on Facebook, it's Forex Global, Forex and Chill with Guinevere. And let's look at a few trades that I took this week and we'll cover some charts and I will open the floor for questions. And that's how easy trading can be. You'll see people um, with all this crazy stuff going on their charts. And um, somebody mute, please. You'll see people with a lot of crazy stuff going on in their charts. And I, I really don't understand how um, 
people can see the market. You know, you want your eyes to be the greatest tool you have in the market because if you look at the market, it is telling you exactly what it's doing. So let's see some trades I took. So that was the before and after on the all USD. We just covered that. Um, I like to post a little bit of humor and a little bit of serious stuff, you know, because trading can be stressful. Um, here's a before trade that I took on all NZD. And when I took this trade, I had uh, a seven figure trader told me that he thought I was crazy when he saw, I posted this before picture and I let it sit there for two days and I came back and here's my after. So that just shows you, I didn't need any indicators or any tools. I sold right here at the very top. And not only that, I stacked the trades. I had put this as my take profit, but it really actually fell way down here. So I'll pull that up and we'll cover that next. But right now, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. Anybody got any questions? Let me see the chat. Yes, Gigi, how you doing? Um, my name is Hakeem. Um, in regards to uh, where you said that you needed a that trend line going downwards, um, since we've noticed that market is trending downwards, um, just to clarify, are we waiting for price to touch that trend line and then look for the sell, or are we just waiting for that impulse to move upwards and then touch the trend line for the sell? Um, the trend line, now just remember, we make the trend lines for our own visual purposes. Okay. The market does not have to respect that trend line. And here's a clear example. You had your market that was clearly in a downtrend. It broke it. It gave us some sideways consolidation and then continued to the downside. So a lot of people were probably looking for buy opportunities. And that's why the first most important rule of trading is look at the news. Uh, the second most important rule I tell people is look left. And so you'll know where you are. If we had looked left, we could see that we clearly had a lot more area to take this down. This was probably just a correction that was due. Let's look at it on a higher time frame. See, on a higher time frame, our trend line would not have gotten broken. Um, so that was just sideways consolidation or a correction on a higher time frame. And if we take everything off, and I know people who are very successful trading with trend lines. I've been a successful trader with trend lines. Um, but you see, we didn't have a lot of good clear touches. This uh, pair has been spotty lately. It didn't give us a good clean sweep to the downside, but nevertheless, it was always in a downtrend. So whenever you know on the higher time frame that you are in a downtrending market, be careful looking for buy setups because they're they could be very short lived. Right. That makes Yes. So initially we're just waiting to make sure we spot that correction. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I've I'll I'll show you something I another thing I've done in the past and it works very well. And um, you can look at some of the previous uh, Forex and chills and it's on there. I heavily relied on nine and 50 EMAs crossing with my MACD. If you look at your MACD, your MACD on a higher time frame, when it crosses under, it stays in a downtrend. And you'll see the pullbacks, uh, like here is where your downtrend started, pulled in, you had a correction. Continue down, pulled in, you had a correction down and th this is really good for newer traders or people trading their eyes when you learn to use these tools um, in conjunction with what you already know and you see every time it pulled in a flag was ending and now that's on an hour and it's the same thing on a four hour on a higher time frame if you're under the MACD you're definitely in downtrend you see all of this was in a downtrend it crossed up for a big correction came down again but um, if you look on the daily it's been in a downtrend since all the way back up here. You could have caught this whole move. You just had it come through a little bit um, on your MACD. But as you're training your eyes, if you want to back test, you can use a, a 9 and 50 EMA. You can see here when the, the red, the 50 crosses over, it's time to get back in the trade. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let me, uh, a good pair to see that on is GBP USD. Now, when they start getting into these zones, they get choppy because they're running out of momentum. So let's see what we see on a higher time frame here. 
This pair has been in a downtrend for a long time. Um, the dollar and the pound being two of the strongest currencies. Uh, there's a lot of tug of war going on here, but like here you see you had your uptrend, it pulled back into your EMA. That correction was over. Pushed up, pulled back into your EMA, that was over and so forth. Up here, of course, you got what we know as a double top or what some people may know as an M. And then you got your reversal to the downside. Some people might see this as equalized. Like I said, everybody sees the market different. I like to mark up uh, completely naked charts. That way my eyes are telling me exactly where I am and what I'm doing. So I won't feel compelled to look for a buy if I'm in a sell. Uh, and I don't feel compelled to look for sales if I if the market's telling me I'm going to buy. We just turn on those indicators for comp confluence and uh, confirmation. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Gigi. You're welcome. Anybody else got any questions? And we'll mark up a few more charts. All right, no more questions. Anybody got a chart you want to look at? Y'all are quiet tonight. Look at Let's look at the uh, USD shift, Gigi. Okay. There was a lady was speaking first. We'll look at hers and then we'll look at yours. What did you say? NZD USD. Okay. Let's look at this pair. All right. Now, one thing I will tell you. Anything you're trading against the dollar, you want to know what the dollar is doing. So let's look at our DXY. If we look at our DXY. I had said it was going to break this, fake everybody out, and then come down. Went a little bit higher than I anticipated, but then it did start coming down. This is my chart from a few days ago. And you'll see it through a wick there and then started coming down. So anytime you're trading something against the dollar, if the dollar is getting stronger, then you want you you will expect it to get weaker against the dollar so right now we technically do still have a strong dollar it hadn't reversed yet that's looking at it on the daily and looking at it on the weekly uh, so with the dollar going up this may have been an overall sell and it was so that's the first thing you want to do you're trading against the dollar if you got a strong dollar this pair is going to be in a sell against the dollar overall but we will mark it up I am looking at my most recent low, my most recent high, my most recent high because my low is too close to the bottom to worry about it on a weekly time frame. It's doing basically all USD and NZD USD move very similar. Uh, the daily, we can mark it off here because it's extremely close to it. And then like you can, it's clear to tell we're in a definite downtrend. So we're only looking for sales at this time, but because again, just like AUD, USD, it is uh, so close to our support area. I would be very hesitant to take sales at this time. I would wait till it gets to this area to see if we're gonna look for buy opportunities. Um, even though we do have a candle to the upside, it's nothing aggressive yet. Um, it could still come down one more time. See how many pips away we are from there. We're about 50 pips away from there. And see, when I when I see that I'm very close to an important range, what I will do is I will switch over to Forex Factory, and I'll see if there's any news coming out that's going to affect that pair next week. Let's see. You can go here to your filter, and you can... Turn on just NZD and USD. And let's see. Um, Monday, you can expect some movement from NZD, USD Monday. Because it's so close to where it is now, it'll probably consolidate or slowly move down. And then this news is going to determine whether it's going to break that zone or reverse. Um, the dollar, let's see, that's Friday. The dollar is saying it's going to stay the same here, get a little bit stronger here, a little bit stronger here on the NZD. So you could see the reversal to the upside 
with NZD news. If NZD gets stronger here a little bit later, it's projected to get a little bit weaker. So the market, uh, the people who control the market use this news to do what they want to do. So they could use the first news to push it down and then the next news to give them their move from out of that zone because they want to come back and retest this area. Looking left is very important because you get a lot of a lot of times it will hit hit it right smack dab on the same line and go up or it might come and fake you out, get you trapped, just like that uh, DXY did. Or they could uh, take that first set of news since it's strong for NZD, push it up, retest this area right here, your previous support area, then come back and uh, right here. And then you would end up getting your reversal. So that's two things that could happen with NZD based on the news next week. And the only thing you really need on this pair right now at this time, um, you can go back to that weekly high, that daily high and that daily low because it's so close to it. Go back down to your four hour. And like I said, you're going to wait and see. Right now it's saying NZD is going to get stronger with that first news and then weaker with the second. So you could see a correction and then a push down to here. And then since this is a strong area, you could get your reversal or it could break through one more and clear us out on this weekly because it's so close to it. I would not be surprised to see that. You would need the dollar to keep dropping pretty good for the NZD to go up pretty strong against the dollar. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes perfect, perfect sense. Thank you. All right. And there was a gentleman asked for a pair after her. What was the pair you asked for? Uh, the USD shift. The pair I hate? Okay, let's cover that. <laughs> you see, where did it come to? Right here. It smack dab. Right there. The dollar was dropping and it came to a previous area right there. So if the dollar keeps dropping, it's going to get down to here. And if it keeps dropping, then it'll get down to here and down to here. All right. And you can look at the dollar and you can also look at the Swiss franc, C-H-F-W-C-U. So if our dollar is getting weaker and our franc is getting stronger, that tells us we got to sell, yes? Right. This is Swiss franc by itself. And you see the Swiss franc, it came here, it had corrected, and then it went back up. Now it's creating equal highs here. But your Swiss franc got strong. Your DXY started dropping, which equals to a sell because dollar was getting weak and chef was getting strong. So as long as those two keep if the dollar keeps going down and swiss franc keeps going up it's going to come back and clear out these previous lows right here and right here so you can watch it on the lower time frame um a trick i learned recently if you take your trend line hold your shift and put it and drop it to the right it makes a perfect line all right so it could come back here break through and hit this then down to here, which this is a strong reversal area just on the four hour. Um, for those of you I was showing earlier, if you want a strong reversal, this is a strong reversal. Okay. So it's looking like it's come, it's headed for 96. It could come to show you another little trick I do, I believe, in the quarter theory because bankers like even numbers, we come here and make this an even 97 and see what happens it pulls it right up into here so we can see it come down to 97 which is another a little over 100 pips all right what was the next pair you guys wanted to look at Did that answer your question that makes sense yeah it does all right um, i think i saw I'll... I don't know if that's me breaking up or someone on the other end because my hotel internet does suck. Someone said gold. gold. I said gold. Oh, gold. I'll show you one thing about gold. It's been on an uptrend since November 2015. Impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. 
So you're going to definitely have to look at higher time frames for this. We have strong moves to the upside. It's not showing any sign right now of weakness. You could get some correction because this has been an uptrend all along. You could get a correction down to here, which would pay you very well because gold pays like uh, $5 a pip. So, but we can mark it up from scratch just like we did everything else. Um, don't have to go very far for our monthly. You know what? This is so volatile. I think I'm going to focus on right here. Here. Because this is an extremely volatile pair. It doesn't take much to make a lot of money. Right here. In our daily, we see we're right here in this zone. Um, if you take this and draw it straight to the side, it's just bouncing off that zone. It's rejected off here twice. You can see it correct and come down again. Because that candle was so strong, um, you see it came out and it tried to retest this high here. If the dollar gets weak, the gold usually gets strong. Usually, um, you know, doesn't have to stick to any rules, but this has still been on a, any sales we've caught have just been correction. Cause those of you who know patterns, this was nothing but a big flag on the daily. It was just on the daily uptrend and like that trend line would have been broken, but that was just an uptrend right there. That was a correction. Now we got another uptrend and it's in a correction. Um, so any sales, I think are going to stop right here. If you sell it, definitely take take um, take your take profit here to wait and see what it's going to do. Because um, the last time it did something like this, everybody thought it was going to sell. But if you look right here, it did that and then just ended up breaking back up to the upside. So any any sales, I would definitely pay attention to this price range. If you see it, you, this has been going up so hard, you have to look way back here to see your next area of resistance. That's how far back uh, to May 2013 that it could come up. So once you find that area, you can go back to your daily and see if it breaks through here. That's another 435 pips to the upside it could go. So I'm going to take all this off. I'm going to just focus on most recent price action because it's so volatile. Um, we're getting that right there. I'll go back to that weekly. Um, come right here. Then I'll, I'll go to my lower time frame and I'm going to watch and see what happens here. So this, these are the areas right here that I would focus on gold. Um, I was like two weeks ago, I was catching 300 pips each way because it was in this zone here. And I had two four figure days because I caught it down, then I caught it up. And then when it started squeezing into this little area, um, if you're familiar with uh, patterns, then it broke us to the upside. All right, that makes sense. Did you, can you? that the way it is right now can i what add your indicators yes um just to kind of see what that would look like you have divergence going on which means you could get a sell down to here it's on a smaller time frame so it could come down to here and then pull up. This is the area you would pay attention to. Uh, let me clean that up a little bit. I would pay attention to this area down here. This is sideways movement, but because you do have divergence, you could get it to come down to here, but that doesn't mean it's gonna break here. But, you know, anytime you have divergence, which is your volume is telling you it's in a sale, but your price action is telling you it's still in a buy, they're uh, contradicting each other. So you could get uh, a pullback down to that zone. All right. That makes sense.
Yes. All right. Is there um, anybody who wants to try and mark up a chart? Like the old school days, Forex and Chill, we used to let people try and mark up a chart, get some uh, positive critiquing. Uh, I'll look at one more. I saw somebody ask for your all. I'm so used to everybody talking. Everybody's quiet tonight. Um, hi, I have, I have a question. Yes. So when you were on ForexFactory.com and you said you were looking at a percentage, um, let's see, what did it say? The actual, I think it is. What What is that exactly? Because you said that. If you open trade. these folders, mm -hmm. if you just click it, open the folders, it'll tell you this is the projected. This is what happened the last time. This is what's projected this time. And if you open the folders, it'll tell you what it is and how to fix it. And um, like the last couple of times, uh, you can look, you can go back to this date and back test it to see what it did. You can go to July 3rd, go on like your one hour and put in July 3rd at this time that this news came out and uh, see how it affected it. So that's how you back test news. But anytime you want to know what news is and how it will affect that currency, just open up the folder. Anything that comes out higher is a sign of strength. Anything that comes out lower, like right here, they're cutting the official cash rate. That is usually dropping an interest rate, which weakens a currency. Okay. So if a, if a currency's rate drops, usually that, that loses in the dollar for that country. So NZD, WCU, um, if you look at it by itself, where it is in the market. Let's look at it on the daily. It, it could, if they cut that cash rate, it could come back and retest this low. Just the NZD by itself. And see, if you look at NZD by itself, and then you look at NZD, USD by itself, it's doing basically the same thing. So if they cut that rate, you could see it come back down to this low because that will weaken that currency for that country and a higher interest rate will strengthen it um brian nzd and aud doesn't move fast um euro pairs of course and gbp pairs move the fastest um anybody else got any questions if not anybody want to mark up a chart um ask questions yeah, about I have a question. Say Hello? that again? Yes, can you mark up GERT, please? Mark up which one? GERT. That's the German 30. Um, I haven't looked at yeah. it in a while, but I know a lot of people are trading it. So um, this is their equivalent to the US 30. Low. Anything. Market structure applies to anything that you trade. Stocks, um, currencies, cryptos, indices. DJ, when you're marking up a chart, do you start at the um, daily chart or the monthly chart? I start at the monthly. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ignore this because it looks like it was like a stop hunt or a fake out. Um, sometimes when it goes just a little bit above, I ignore it. So you can see it's on a definite downtrend. This is your next area to focus on. Um, it'll come back down into here. Now you're not just going to sell. You're, you know, going to go to a lower time frame. Look for the perfect entry. So you look at how this pair moves. You see how it moved. Um, let it correct again. Um, if you're still using the trend line, you can definitely draw your trend line. Let it pull back into it. That's one method. If not, you can look to past uh, support and resistance areas. Draw your trend line over that way. Box it in so you can see it come back up there. Oops, did that too soon. So you could see it come back up here and then drop. 
of course i don't enter on anything higher than like a 15 minute when i'm trading market structure so i would look down here um, when you go to a lower time frame of course your lines are going to be a little off because what is a wick on a higher time frame is a candle on a lower time frame so i would wait until this pullback was over if you wanted to turn on your 9 and 50 and your macd you would wait until you see how this flag was over when it hit the MACD? It continued. The flag was over when it hit the MACD, and it continued. Wait for it to hit your MACD and continue. All right, that makes sense. This is going by fast tonight. Y'all are quiet tonight. Yeah, um, I have an extra though. What's the thoughts on um, Euro GDP? Euro GBP, it's still mm -hmm. in an uptrend, um, and I'll chart it up. Uh, everybody's looking for it to sell. Just because a pair has been going up a long time doesn't mean it's going to sell. Uh, let's take everything off and look at it. If you look at it on your daily, um, there's been no indication to sell. If you look at it on your weekly, let's see how much higher we could come. It'll come all the way back up to here. Well, there's nothing saying sell at this time on a higher time frame or a lower time frame. Um, so you could wait for it to come back here and then you could get it to go up here and then you might could see your sell because this is a higher time frame zone. Uh, that's your weekly. And sometimes what you're going to see is they'll come up and they'll shoot a little bit past it. So they can knock it. They know everybody's looking to sell this pair. They know everybody's looking to sell this pair. Look, they caught people in the sale, pushed it back up, caught people in the sale, pushed it back up. It has been an uptrend since back here, July 2015. It's been an overall uptrend. Higher time frame overrules lower time frame. So whenever you look at your weekly or your daily and you're an overall buy, be very careful with your sales because they're just corrections and they could trap you and reverse at any time. All right. That makes sense? Yeah. Yes. yes. Can you repeat that again? You said be very careful. With the you're coming into a higher time frame uh, area where this market has reversed here and it's reversed here. So they know that we're sitting here waiting to sell this pair. How many people have sold this pair lately just to get kicked out? Everybody I know has been selling Euro GBP and there's nothing saying sell Euro GBP. Um, and I, I'll admit I was one of them, I sold it too early. I made a little bit of money, got kicked out at break even, but there's nothing saying it's ready to sell yet. Um, the institutions you see here, you had a strong candle to the upside and then it sold off. Now, again, you got a strong candle to the upside. It could reverse now, or it could push back up, but let's do this little trick here. Look where it stopped. It created equal high from the previous candle through a wick because it knew people were sitting here waiting to sell and then pulled back. So. If people were sitting here waiting to sell, they had sell stops. It activated the sell stops and then took their money. I mean, yeah, it activated their sell stops, went a little bit past their stop loss because they wicked it and took their money. Because if you look at that on the lower time frame here, it doesn't look like much. But if we go here, look, it went up just enough. This is that whole wick. It went up 59 pips. Most people have like a 30 pip stop loss. That's just a number that's stuck in people's heads and then so people are like oh it's going to sell they sold it here it threw them out and people are like oh well here it's going to buy so it got here they expected it to buy and they bought and it threw them out and here it is again so all of this right here is nothing but that wick on that weekly let's look at this right here on a one hour and now let's look at it on the weekly you see that Nothing but a wick. A wick to 
cost you to lose your trades so they can make money. All right, that makes sense? Yep. All right, so when you get to those zones, be very careful because that's where they trap retail traders and take your money and blow your accounts. Everybody for the last few weeks, oh, Euro GBP is going to sell, it's going to sell, it's going to sell, it's going to sell. They've been saying that since back here in April. Everybody's been trying to catch that sell. All right. I'm glad that's making sense to y'all. Um, Crazy. This is stuff that. you learn the more you trade, you know. Um, as I was telling my team today, people trade for a year and they make six figures and they think they're experts. Um, you're not an expert trader until you've been trading probably five plus 10 years. You can be a six figure trader, but not be an expert trader. As we know, there are people who have strategies that work, strategies that make them six figures, but they can't mark up a chart. So they're depending on a strategy. Uh, learning market structure, the greatest tool in the market is your eyes. By training like this, you are training your eyes to see the market and understand what the, the money makers are doing right here. Um, so that's why market structure will, will out trade anything, any day. If you use indicators and strategies, that's fine. But knowing market structure will give it 10 times the power that it is now. Um, so if you're depending on an indicator to tell you to buy or sell, once you learn market structure, you will know whether or not to take that buy or that sell. Thank you, GD. All right. Anybody else got any questions? This Forex and Chill went by fast. Um, this recording will be up on Forex and Chill. Let's look at YouTube. It'll be up tomorrow. We have to thank Mr. Grant. He's my host and um, he records for me. If you just type in Forex and Chill and the one, look, I put in three L's. We are going to chill, but this is um, my page. And if you go back and you look at my trading a year ago versus the now, she was in my head. Um, the they were go back and look at my trading last year versus now. And see, that's another reason I started posting this stuff. This is my own personal growth. I've grown phenomenally, um, not bragging or anything, but I've really locked myself into the charts. I study more than I trade. I'll have four figure days and then turn around and not trade a few days because I'm studying, studying because I know if I study now, it's going to pay me later. And I'm the kind of person I can't study and at the same time because when I started breaking away from the way I was used to trading to the way I'm trading now, it would get confusing. And um, it's like looking through a blue lens on one eye and a green on the other. It, it, it wasn't meshing well. So I, I pulled back from trading. I made a bunch of money, made a big withdrawal, and then found a better way to trade. And I'm studying it and it's making sense. And you can look at my page and look at my entries now versus, you know, my entries then. I was getting good trades then, but um, I was also having a lot of break even trades. And I just want to increase my skill as a trader and uh, everybody on the team. Everybody that's on my IMLT, IML team, they can tell you we do. Uh, oh, I got a thousand subscribers, Grant. I didn't notice that, did I? Shut up. Woohoo. I got a thousand subscribers. Thank you, everybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm my job and my, my commitment to myself is to grow and to help other people grow with me. I know I can't teach everything on Forex and Chew, I don't have the time nor the resources. And again, that's why, uh, thank you everybody. That's why I bring other traders on because what I teach might not make sense to you or it might make a little sense, but someone else comes in and ties it all together or gives you that aha moment or that missing piece. So um, if you know any great traders that would like to come on and share some of their knowledge and their skill set, have them to reach out to me. I like bringing you guys variety. Thanks everybody. <laughs> yeah, I wish YouTube would give me some money. Um, is there anybody that uh, you would like to mark up a chart? Um, like I said, when we first started doing Forex and Chill, I would open up the floor because the way I grew as a trader is to mark up everything. And if you look at my list, when I started trading, I would mark up each currency by itself, like the odd by itself, then CAD by itself, 
And that way, at the end of the week, I would take a currency that was getting strong and trade it against a currency that was getting weak. And so I go through every week and I just highlight all the trades. And you look at it this way. Look, this is what I was telling you. You see this fake out? This is a perfect example. I sold this. This is the one, if you looked at my chart, I sold it up here and I posted that I had sold it. And people were clicking the laugh button on my on my page the other day. So when I posted my before and after, I'm like, this is for the person who was laughing at my trade because I got it right here. You can go back to my page and see it. And then I got another entry down here or right here on this one. And then it's like my take profit was here. But you see, like I said, on the higher time frame that week, they came, they were like, yeah, just people here waiting to buy. They took out the buyers. People started selling. They came back up, took out the sellers. And look where they landed. Um, and that's just market manipulation at its finest. Right here, dead on. Right here, dead on. Oops, if I can get it to work. Right here, dead on. But what did they do here? They came here and took everybody's money. So let's see if this is like a wick on higher time frame. Let's see, we are on the four hour. Let's go to the daily. Um, so be careful approaching zones on the daily. Boy, it blasted through that thing. Yep, there it is. It is nothing but a wick on the weekly. It respected it on the daily, the four hour and the one hour, but on the weekly, it wicked it and knocked out everybody who was sitting there waiting to buy again. And, and took their money, All right? That's just a wick. Uh, all right, let's see in the chat. Yep. <laughs> you can trade on TradingView if you have one of their brokers. Now, I'll tell you, I like to trade from my broker because these zones here might be two or three pips different because of spreads. Um, I like to use FXCM. You can go through, if you type in any pair, you will see you have one, two, three, four. You have five brokers you can choose from. I have found the FXCM matches most closely to my broker, which is FX Choice. So I use them, but still they could be one or two pips off. So whenever you set these zones, uh, pro tip here, Use these zones according to your MT4 because those few pips could make the difference in wicking you out. Like right here, this wick might not be on your broker, but it is on the one here on TradingView. All right, that makes sense to everybody. And to change your candles, you know how to change your candles. I did uh, templates so I could change it back and forth just to show people color scheme. I have GG. And then colors, color theme, I have gray. Is this the one? I keep going back to the wrong one. There we go. So you can uh, make your own color schemes and, and trade back and forth. I even, a lot of you know I trade Rinko's. I have my Rinko's. They were supposed to be saved as uh, black and white, but for some reason they don't keep saving. All right, is somebody calling my name? There we go. Yeah, these stay. These stayed. Um, I had just put it on wrong color scheme. Can you go back and show where the color scheme you went, please? You just uh, you you set this chart up the way you want it, and right click, color theme, save as. If I put blah, it saves it to blah. So now I could go back, color theme, and change it to black. I could go to color theme and change it to blah. And I can go back and I just hit this little mark right here and it takes blah away. All right, that makes sense. I need to change this. Uh... Yes, it does. Thank you. All right, you're welcome.
Gigi, how does those grids help you? Say that again. How do these grids help you? How does the gray help me? The grid. So the grid. Uh, somebody was showing me something the other day. Um, that's how you would know the open of each new day. Uh, let me go back to candles. That's how you would uh, know where the market opens each new day. I, I take it off. They were showing me something they do, but um, I usually don't have it on mine. Uh, let's see if I go to this. There you go. This is how I have mine. Somebody was showing me something. I was testing it, but I, um, some people trade, you know, like the London breakout or the open and close. There's different strategies based around that. And if, if you trade based on the daily high and low, I know there's a couple strategies on that, um, that, that will help you in that way. Me, I, I don't like looking at them. It's just personal preference. Okay. Like I said, Thank you so much. You trade what you, trade what you see. Don't, don't trade like, I've I've taken trades. I would be in a buy for something, and then somebody who I looked up to, who was a six or seven figure trader, dropped the chart and said, "Hey, I'm going to sell for this." I would close out my my buy and get in their sale, and then end up I was right and they were wrong. So I'm just saying that to let you know that everybody loses trades. So you need to. That's why I left a lot of chats. If you're in a lot of these chats, it's the worst thing you could ever do because you're going to sit there and you're going to question yourself. You're going to question your skills and your abilities. You need to trade, even if you're using like harmonic scanner, I have people on my team having three and four figure days trading a harmonic scanner. There's people having three and four figure days with bounce back. There's nothing wrong with that. When you take your trades, trade them in demo until you become confident in your trades and you make, make money using the products. If you're part of IML, um, like I said, we have people on my team that use the harmonic scanner. And there's a guy I've been trading like a month. He made $300 one day and now he's having consistent three figure days. Another guy, he's been at it for three months. He drives a tractor trailer. I don't know if he's on here tonight. He can't always be on the charts. So he uses the harmonic scanner. He'll, he'll go to like the four hour, one hour. He's got his strategy. He applies, he swing trades and he's having four figure days out there on the road driving a truck. So there's nothing wrong with using signals and using products to make money as you learn to master the charts. Whenever I'm switching to a new strategy and learning something new, I'm not going to slap a standard on it like I do with something that I know. I'm going there with a 0.1 or 0.25. So, you know, when I started doing this a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh my God, I wish I had put a standard on this, you know, but um, whenever you try something new, either try it in demo or try it with 0.01, don't risk your your account until you've got your confidence up in what you're doing. And um, one one thing, if you if you just look at this, just if you want to know where you are in the market, like I said, hold that shift down. Look at these equal highs. Equal highs are extremely important, but be careful trading them. Um, you better keep a, a stop below or above because eventually they're going to come fake you out and. Uh, keep going with the direction of the market. But if you're in a overall trend to the downside on the daily, just sell. So I knew I was in an overall downtrend. So when I got here and I took the sell, like I said, people laughed at me, clicked the laugh button. And I'm like, okay. I said, I'm gonna show them something in about two days when that trade hits. And uh, yeah, I had a seven figure trader told me, you know what, I thought you were crazy when you told me you were getting ready to sell all the NZD. And I was like, well, I take that as a compliment coming from a pro, so. so. <laughs> Any more so questions? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, as far as educator is concerned via IML, um, who is the best educator you recommend um, with the technique and style that you have? To, I to can watch? tell you that um, IML has a lot of great educators who are making a lot of money. Um, you need to find the one that clicks with your person. I watched a couple of different people. The first time I watched Stevenson Lindor, I stopped watching everybody else because I wanted to perfect what he was doing. And that made all the difference in my trading. I would watch him, put him on pause, pull up my other screen and I would mimic. I would pause, mimic, pause, mimic until I, I was like, what the heck? blank is a flag. What does he keep saying is a flag, you know? And um, one thing I admire about Steven Salindor is he's consistent. You know, you see other traders, 
on other educators, they have a new strategy every week or every month, or they're teaching one thing today and something next week. I need something consistent. Consistency is what pays because no matter what strategy that you learn, if you are consistent with it and you learn that strategy, you can make money with it. So that drew me to him. He was consistent. He did the same thing day in, day out, taught us the same thing. But now that I've come to know him personally, I know he's like me. He studies all the time. He tries to improve and get better all the time. And we talk on a daily basis. Um, you know, and some of the stuff that I'm learning, I'm learning it with him. And that's, like I said, I admired that about him because he's a seven figure trader, but he still studies. We study together and um, that, Finding somebody who's consistent and somebody that clicks with you. If they click with you and it makes sense to you, then don't watch anybody else until you perfect that strategy. Now, sometimes I'll watch other people to see if there's something I can add to this or, you know, have another aha moment. But just as I was saying about those chats, tuning everything out, I tuned out everybody except Stevenson Lindor. He, you never see him out there showboating or begging for attention or saying, follow me, pick me. But he's consistently rated as the number one IML educator on IML TV for a reason. You know, and I think that's why is because he does one thing and he does it well and he sticks with it. And you don't see him using a bunch of indicators and, and tools and strategies. He teaches how to read the raw market, and know where you are in the market. All right. Thank you. And that's so, actually, okay. Go ahead. Um, no, hey, Lydia. Yes, actually, Lydia is on here. She's like, y'all, let me tell you about Lydia. Um, you can follow her on YouTube now. I think she's got a YouTube channel, Facebook. Um, she's got a six-year-old who watches Stevenson Lindor. She's got her six-year-old trading. Uh, she's very inspirational. She retired herself on uh IML. She she trades. She's another one that uses like the harmonic scanner, gets her pips and gets out. Um, we had someone on our team. He's doing he 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 challenged himself. He's a great trader. I don't know if he's on here. His name's Eric, but he said, I'm going to try daily compounding. So even though he was catching 100, 200 pip moves, he said, I'm going to come up with a compounding worksheet. And you know, I've spread it, I've given it out plenty of times for free. If you're on a computer, um, Grant can drop it in here. You can download it. If not, just reach out to me and I'll give it to you. Mike Navarrete, I think that's how you say his name on IML, actually made it. But um, Lydia and, and the guy on my team, Eric, they have a set amount of pips they get every day from like the IML harmonic scanner or a chart that they read. So he, and I'm, I, I, I hate throwing out money and I'm not doing this to brag, but he took 15 pips a day at one standard and he made $7,000 for the month just from compounding. 15 pips, get out. 15 pips, get out. Don't over trade. Don't chase every signal that comes across. And um, so now this month he'll change it to a 2.0. And next month he can change it to a 3.0. So you, Everybody knows I call myself the queen of the swing. I will take a trade. I, I caught 300 pips on gold going up, 300 pips on gold going down. And But to keep your money and to protect your account, if you get in here at a standard, you don't hold that standard all the way up to the top. When you get that first impulse, take 50% or 80% off, shave it off. It's going to pull back. Then you can put like another 0.10 and let it ride up, then close it out here. So you can turn the 300 pip move into like a 500 pip move. So um, don't feel like, you know, I used to think, oh, I got to have the whole move. And so I would get up here and it would reverse on me and take all my money back. So you have to trade smarter. So um, stacking trades, just say you get in here, just say you put in a point one zero. okay? When it gets up here, close 0.08 you're going to have a 0 0.02 pull back to here when it pulls back to here and you know your pullback is over you can open another 0 0.02 by this time you've moved all your stop losses up you've taken off most of your money now you got a clear ride up to your next point and you're stacking and um that's what i did on that um shoot i've closed my page but um that's what i did on that 
A-U-D-N-Z-D. I showed you guys I stacked it. I know people who uh, stack multiple. Like if you got a 300 pip move, you can have about four trades running and never go into drawdown. You just have to work on those entries. Um, I saw someone ask about how to join my team. You can inbox me on Facebook or um, we, we moved away from Telegram. And we're on Discord now and, and we like it a whole lot better. But let me show you. If I go to post, it'll probably come up. Um, you'll see that I've had people on my uh, Forex and Chill from other teams. I'm not competitive at all. I'm here for the skill set. And um, if they can teach you something I can't, then they can probably teach me something that I didn't know. But here is where I put in that first train that everybody was laughing at. And then here I put in another trade. I had my take profit and when it was falling hard, I moved my take profit down. And I'm, you can move your stop losses up that way you're protected. Because once it started falling, you know, I had a six pip stop loss. When I got in here, I had like a six pip stop loss. When it went into profit, I didn't move it up until it cleared this zone. Cause you see it wicked back a couple times because I knew eventually I was gonna get this. And so when I finally got that second fall, I got in it pulled back and then uh, it took me all the way down. So yeah, learn how to stack. And don't ever, if you get in here at a 0.10, you don't want to get in a 0 0.10 here because if it reverses, then you've lost the money you made. Never overpower your premium trade. This is your premium trade because you got in with minimal risk and it never, you never had any drawdown. So you don't want to overpower and lose money. If I got in here at a 1.0, then I'm going to get in here at like a 0.25. I got 0.25 here still running. This is going to pull back. I'm going to get another 0.25 and ride them both up. That makes sense? Yes, and yes. All right. Um, yes, Gigi. Somebody's asking about the compounding sheet. If 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 um, Grant's unable to drop it here, I know if you're on your computer, you can you can download it here in the chat. If not, just hit me up on Facebook or whatever, and I'll send it to you because I didn't create it. And the only reason I share it is because he dropped it on a Zoom and he told everybody to feel free to use it. It's a very good compounding sheet. Um, one app, a lot of people don't know about proper risk management. I'm um, going to type this out. And I've been using this for a few weeks. You can find this app on your cell phone, Steno. You can put in the pair, how much is in your account what your stop loss is, and it will tell you exactly what lot size to trade to keep from over leveraging. You can tell it, you know, you want to risk 1%, 2%, or 3%, and it will give you the exact lot size to use based on what pair you're trading, your account size, and how many pips are in your stop loss. All right. Lydia, um, people are asking for your YouTube, so if you want to drop it in here, feel free. You know, I give props to everybody. Um, we're not directly on the same team, but her chairman is my chairman, so I always show her some love. All right, anybody else got any questions on anything? Still no volunteers to mark up a chart? Don't y'all be scared of these charts. These, this, you see how quickly um, you can just, if you go to your YouTube channel and copy it, you can drop it here in the chat. I'm you guys. Who wants to mark up one? This is Matt. You gonna mark up for me? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, Y'all see, I can knock out a chart in less than 30 seconds. That should be your goal. I used to, ha it used to take me all day to mark up 25. It took me a couple of days. Oh my <laughs> it took me a couple, couple of days. <laughs> hey, but practice I'll be stuck perfect, on the same right? one. But usually practice this makes perfect. Chart. Our goal is to be seven figure traders, and that's how we're going to get there. Consistency. Um, when what what was the eye opener for me? I saw a 22 year old pick up a, a notebook that was like three inches of notes, and he was marking up 25 charts every week, twice a week. And he had become a six figure trader within a few months and was able to leave college and is now teaching on IML. I'm like, I'm slacking. Let me start marking up these charts. And that's how we started Forex and Chill.
All right, Matt, you got to walk us through it and tell us what you're doing. Don't just chart. You got to explain it for the people in the back. I don't know if his mic is on. Yeah, his I think mic is not on. Matt, unmute yourself, sweetie. Can you hear me now? My bad. Yep. So we start. So we starting off with the monthly, and I'm gonna drive my. I'm gonna grab my horizontal ray to capture the highs and lows of that time. Uh, let me put that lock on. Okay, let's see. Well, pardon me. Okay. All right, then I'm going to drop down to the weekly and refresh. What I would like to do now is capture the supply in demand zones. Um, okay. Grant is up here cheering your own. He's a go, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. I must admit, I was nervous to mark mark up in public at first. Um, okay, so I'm gonna mark that one. We already have the monthly high, monthly low here, right? So I'm gonna do that and then drop down to the day. So I'm going to drop down to the four hours so I could draw my trend line. Uh, and also, can I can I put a fib on it? Hello? Now you know I love the Fibonacci. I okay. use it all the time. Okay. Well, I'm I'm starting to learn it. As you know, you know, I didn't know anything about it per se. So from the high to the low. Then So I know that, that the market um, would normally give a 50% retracement, right? At least. So I'm going to try to capture that. OK, and then, OK. To right there. What you think so far, Gigi? Me, uh, the old me would have done that buy. The new me would have waited on the sell. But I, I agree with that. Um, there's one thing that you did that I want you to go back and take a look at. Yes, go back to your monthly for me. I think I know what you're talking about with, with the double resistance. No. Oh. 
uh, refresh real quick. If you, uh, do you know how to hit the, the eye, hit that eye over here so it hides everything on your chart? It won't erase it, it'll just hide it. It's above your trash can. They have problems. Oh, okay. I, I, I... Yeah, hit your eyeball over here right above the trash can. Okay. Over at the bottom left. You know how you remove everything? Just hit that eyeball. Okay. If you look left, do you see where that wick is? Yes, ma'am. The reason I think GU is going to come down there is that monthly candle at the right. It's only two days old. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wouldn't have used it as my monthly low because it, it each candle starts at the first of the month and today's just the second. So that candle just started like yesterday at 5 p.m. So it really, it really doesn't represent a whole month of movement. It's only like two days old. That makes sense? It makes sense. So that's why I would have come all the way back to that. And it's so close to that. Um, got you, got you. That I think it's going to continue to drop to that. Okay, so I'm going to make my adjustments. So you're saying like, like so, right? Right. Now go back to your weekly and see how many pips it is between that one you drew. Yeah, I don't think this is reversing yet. Um, and, and yeah, you were right. I, I feel like it's going to buy up and then continue selling down. But you see, it, I think it's going to still come down there. Okay, so. Whoa. That's a big difference. 447 pips. Uh, a wick doesn't look like much on a higher time frame, but when you come down to a lower time frame, wicks are candles. Yes, ma'am. Wicks happened. I know a lot of people say ignore wicks. Woo, do not ignore wicks. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go all the way down to, to the hour. Um, if you know what you're looking for, um, I don't go any lower. Once, once I know what I'm looking for, I don't go any lower. Got you. Got you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to mark up. All right. You're welcome. Does anybody else want to mark up a chart? I like to do it. Who is that? It's Vivian. Come on, Vivian. Kill it. <laughs> show, us, show, show us the money for next week, girl. We all trying to be rich. I want, uh, I want some figures next week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Great gonna. Time, I like I like your analysis. I agree with your analysis. But just just don't ignore those. Yeah, whenever a monthly time a candle is forming, that's one thing. Uh, if a candle is forming, I I don't go through it or or mark it off. Do I go now? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You're the star of the show. You you gonna call this seven figure trade for everybody next week? <laughs> All right. Do I go where it says chair right there in the middle? Yes. Click that. Okay. All right. Hey, please. Green tongues. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm trying to see how do you. Uh... Now, when you click share, whatever oh, okay. you click on, we're going to see it. So don't have no crazy pictures up there. <laughs> oh, no. Uh. <laughs> There's Lydia. She found Lydia. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Let me go. Let me open up a chart here. Okay. Y'all, I'm seriously excited. I didn't know I had a thousand subscribers. Yay. Mm -hmm. So y'all, let's get Lydia to a thousand. <laughs> I'm one of them. I just subscribed also to Lydia. Awesome. On the episode that you, uh, Dedicated to your mom, see? Oh, I know, right? That's sweet. Mama's birthday is midnight tonight. Hey, I got my boy Andre is on here tonight. Yeah, Andre, after she marks up, we'll let you uh, say a few words. Glad to see you on here. Hadn't seen you lately. I'll be back in Myrtle Beach soon. I'm trying to move this out of the way. There it goes. Not one. And if 
y'all notice uh, that guy, John Fibonacci, that's been visiting on um, IML TV, he was on Forex and Chill first. We make stars here, baby. One of y'all might be on Forex on uh, IML TV next. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I had Mario. So how do we get you up there? So yeah, I had Mario on here before he was on uh, IML TV. Say that again. How did we get you on there? I don't know, but you know, I would love to teach beginners market structure. Uh, maybe if I make enough noise, they'll recognize me one day. I love doing this stuff. I think that that intro part will be very helpful before everybody starts getting crazy with the charts and seeing all the uh, the strategy. Yeah, uh, trading with the naked eye is the best thing you can ever learn. Um, Melissa, it was S T I N U, S T I N U. So I'm gonna mute myself and uh, Miss Vivian, you take it away and you teach okay. us how to trade. <laughs> I'm learning from you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mark up my monthly. So, so, um. From here, right there, weekly high, mark the eye right there. Can I give you a little helpful tip, tip real quick? Sure. Over on the right, if you get rid of those alerts, that'll give you more room to oh, work. That's right. Okay. Um, I, I like for you to be able to, the more you can see, the better. And then up at the top, if Right beside US dollar, if you hit that little minus sign at the top left, it will hide your EMAs out of your way so you'll have more charts, chart space to work with. And Matt, I meant to show you how to turn on like your monthly, daily, and weekly at the top so you don't have to keep going looking for them. But I'll yes, show you later. Okay. okay. So I'm, I marked up my monthly. Now I'm going to drop down to my weekly. So you're just tracking that, it with the, the and I'm just gonna put a, a a line right here because I see that um, um, it has a lot of resistance in this area right here. So I'll put just one line, one trend line right there. By okay. And I'm going to drop down to my daily. And I'm going to put another trim line. One here. You see how well it respected that previous area? Yeah. And one right here. Those price has bounced off there a couple of times. And now I'm going to go to my four hour. And this is where I'm going to put my trim line. And it's going down. Oops. And from there, I'm going to go to one, one hour close. I'm not, a, I'm not now, like. Do you know what type of pattern that is there at the bottom? Uh, this? Where it's uh, right here? Pattern down at the bottom where it's oozing down slowly. Uh, let me open it up a little bit. And it's, I, I see two things. Oh, and um, I'm going to see if you notice them. What do okay. we learn about the MACD if the MACD is doing something opposite of our candles? If the MACD. D is doing opposites of, of candles. So yeah, our MACD is going up as if the buyers are controlling the market, but your candles are going down. Do you remember what that's called? No, Matt, no. I, 
Yep, somebody said it in the chat. It's divergence. So you could do like a little trend line at your MACD at the right bottom here. of that going up. Yep. And see, your candles are also making what's called a descending channel. Yes. Um, you use your trend line at the top. And go down to your MACD at the bottom and take it oh, from there. Okay. If you go from that red up to that green, you see how your MACD is telling you that the buyers have power right now? Uh huh. But your That's candles are telling you it's still selling, yes? Yes. That shows you that the sellers are losing momentum. They're, they're closing out their, um, oh, hush, Jamie. Jamie's the king of divergence. He taught me <laughs> divergence. I have to give him a shout out. If it wasn't for Jamie, I would never have learned divergence. Uh, he's on here. He's cut the rope. <laughs> it's making a descending channel, number one. You got divergence, number two. But now, this is telling us we're going to start looking for a correction, right? Right. I want you to go back to your daily. You see that long week to your left? You see where you're sitting on your daily? Yes, right here. Yep, yeah, yeah. but you see where your candles are now? You'll probably get a small correction. So if, you, if you're going to buy this, I don't think it'll be long-lived. It'll probably just be a correction. It'll, go, it'll, it'll go stop here and then shoot back up. Right. I think you'll get a little correction and then a continuation down there to that wick. You see that wick looking left? Yes, this one right here? Yep, I think we're going to come down there. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you're going to get a little buy, a little correction to the top but then pull all the way back down there probably. All right, that's okay, Grant. If anybody, um, y'all just hit me up on um, Facebook and I'll, I'll try to upload. I think I can upload documents on my Facebook page. We'll get it to you somehow. Thank you. That was a good markup. You, you trapped price. He did, Maria? Awesome, yeah. Lindor looks at the higher picture. He never, um, looks at the lower time frame to figure out where the market's going. So, yeah. Now, let me can I ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. If you, okay, can you stop on, uh, in the fourth hour on the, 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 For overall trend, I don't go lower than the daily for overall trend. But Everybody, did you, everybody's telling you good job, Miss Vivian. But yeah, Thank I you. stop at the four hour unless there's some some reason I need to look at a lower time frame. But that's just for analysis. Now entry I go as low as one minute. But for uh -oh. analysis, I don't go any lower than four hour, maybe one hour. Just depending so, on how the market's moving. So if if okay, so for instance, my in, if I wanted my entry to be in, I, I know you have to go two time frames. Okay, let's look, at, let's look at your one hour again. Jamie, you want to teach divergence next? Okay, see your one hour? You got that descending channel, mm -hmm. which is a reversal pattern, and you got your divergence. Now let's look at your 15 minute. Are you going to enter on your 15 minute if you're looking at your one hour right there? Yeah, Grant, I agree. I've I've been missing doing forex and chill like this, but the reason I haven't been is because um, you know, my internet issues out here. But I'm thankful that the internet has sustained me. All right, hit your little uh, refresh button, and you can still see um divergence going on here. Yeah, and zoom out so we can see. Zoom out. Yeah. So to pull it in some. Yep, it's flat line, and it's getting ready to go up, probably about. 30 pips this pair doesn't move extremely much and then reverse but um you could like uh, matt did earlier you could uh, uh, could you mute them for me grant thank you um you could draw fibonacci like um matt did earlier you can just watch your pattern but it's probably gonna pull, pull up and then drop all right we got andrew on here andrew wants to say a few words and after that jamie you want to mark up some divergence for everybody uh, be honest. Yeah. All right, Andrew, what's up? Talk to us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How that you doing? That was a great, great markup. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we hear you. All right. How you doing? Thank you, Gigi, for giving me the platform to speak my testimony. Uh, my name is Andrew Maxwell, 36 years old, from Brooklyn, New York, I've been in South Carolina for the past 13 years. 
uh, got introduced to IML a little bit over now, a year and a half ago in January. Uh, met Stevenson Lindor uh, out there. I mean, he put me on his um, seminar. I watched it, enjoyed what I liked, wanted to know more. So I signed up back in March. Uh, the person that signed me up, though, wasn't really into learning with it. He just was recruiting me to get the money. So when I got in, it was just me and the videos that I had to my hands. So I tried to study, you know what I mean? I was making money, losing money, but nothing uh, sustainable, nothing consistent. Then back in, I want to say November, I met Gigi. I got into a little family situation that let me homeless, whatever like that. So I was living out of a hotel and I just decided to hit Gigi up and just um, let her know, you know what I mean, that I'm still on the team. But she was asking me why I wasn't making, you know what I mean, trades or being, you know what I mean, in the groups and stuff like that. And then I told her what was going on. And she was like, you know what, just cancel your memberships and all like that. I got you. I'm going to train you for free. So she got me right. It took her 30 minutes just to get me right. And I'm going to just skip it. But in total, about like four months, I made $25,000. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I left it in my traded account getting bigger so i'm getting I'm think i'm doing good you know what i'm saying think good of myself uh then i started you know people come to me things are looking good then i started getting my three people everything was looking good and then i got introduced to us 30 and i didn't do my homework on it i was just fast because by this time i'm thinking i'm nice i got it by now but i should always stay a student like they teach you so I put in the trade on US 30, thought a sale was gonna happen, and not doing my homework, not knowing how volatile it is, I was gonna do five standards. But I was like, you know, it's my first time in here, let me do one standard, thinking that's low. So now I go get something to drink, about like three minutes later, I come back negative $6,000. Oh my God, what's going on? Let me close that trade out. So this is where the market got me emotionally, because I lost that six thousand. First thing on my mind is, oh my God, I gotta make that back. So that six thousand turned to twelve thousand. Mm. It took me four months to make twenty five thousand dollars. It took me two days to go to five thousand and start me out. So basically, it when I got the twenty five, I went to my job and I said, you know what, I don't need this job no more. I quit, and I talked shit the way out. Like, ah, y'all still want to work? Ah, I told y'all about this forex thing. Y'all don't want to listen to me. Look at me now. I'm out. So now when I lost the money, I'm like, oh, my God. I got to go to work again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then I thought about it. I was like, oh, my God. I can't go back to Walmart because I talk shit. You know? But what kept me going with the forex is because my number one thing is I made the money. I know I could do it again. You know what I mean? So that makes me keep going. But I was embarrassed. You guys, um, GG and all that, I just disappeared off the face of the earth. He was asking about me. Um, my boy Jamie was asking about me. Then I just had to, because I was embarrassed, I just had to come to him and tell him what's going on. So, but just want to let y'all know, stay patient, always stay a student, and keep whatever works, keep doing that. Do not think that, okay, I got it now, I can do my own thing, I don't need nobody no more, like I did. <laughs> so. Hey, you know, you family, we love you, man. How you doing? Are you trading? Are you studying? You know, we've yep. been dropping those hot videos and all these new strategies in the private team. You keeping track? Hello? Yeah, yeah I'm still on. Yeah, yeah, still... yeah, how's your trading going now? It, I mean, I'm not trading yet because I'm building my account now. Because I'm not going to start off like last time I started with 140. That's how I got to 25K. Yeah, but... he, he took $140 to 25K. Okay. And but like now I want to build he a let account. that one loss. If he let that one loss shake him and he tried to revenge trade. And it's like one of my favorite uh boxers used to be Miguel Cotto. Okay, oh. Miguel Cotto took a bad beating and he let it just like like take his whole his whole fighting career went down the drain from that one uh brutal loss. Then he came back, he found out the guy had wrapped his hands and had beat him illegally. Then he came back and he beat the crap out of that guy. So, you know, it's a mindset thing. You know, he let the market beat him up, but he didn't give up. He knows, like he said, he did it once. This guy went from $140 in homeless to he was like in waterfront condos on the beach, but he let it mentally. I told you guys earlier, 
It is a mental thing. I always use a stop loss. Don't be afraid to. I never learned to make money until I learned to lose money. And by that, when a trade was going against me, get out of it. I still had money to trade with. I used to hold on to a trade thinking, oh, it's got to turn around. Oh, it's got to turn around. Oh, it's got to turn around. It doesn't got to do nothing. If you're in a bad trade, break up with a bad trade like you should break up with a bad ex, okay? Cut it. Um, just like anything toxic can ruin your life, a bad trade can ruin your account. Uh, we love Andrew. He's family. He's an awesome trader. Um, he's just regrouping, and he'll be back with an even bigger testimony, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's why I'm holding on, because I know just have a bigger account, I could do it more faster than, you know, than what I did with the 140. But it is what it is. If you can, if you can take 140 to 25,000, that's amazing, guys. That's amazing. And he did that in four months. Oh. So um, we just expect bigger things from Andrew. It takes a big man to come in here and tell his story. Hey, um, my wounds is for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So I'll take it for somebody else here because if y'all listen to me, then y'all won't do the same mistakes, hopefully. Yeah, and see, that's why I started Forex and Chill because I was tired of people just signing people up for money, tired of people um, not teaching people to trade, tired of people leading people on. And, you know, I had to figure this out on my own and I didn't want everybody else to have to figure it out on their way, on their own the way I did. Um, I thank God for Steven Salendor taking me under his wing when I used to reach out to him, I used to bug the crap out of him. And I finally signed up on his team. And um, it's been blessings ever since. But thank you, Andrew. Miss Vivian, if you will stop sharing, oh, um, we'll, we'll let Jamie right. come on and teach us a little Did bit you, about divergence. Can yes. Ask your, can I ask you a question before? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you trade every day or are you waiting for price action to get to one of these uh, higher time frame zones before you are you what you i do trade? what i do is i treat the market like just think of your grandma trying to bake an apple pie she'll go to the grocery store and pick up 25 apples take them home out of those 25 apples she's gonna take the five best ones to make that pie so even though i mark up everything i focus on what gives me the like the other day when i traded news there was ga and ea um, I looked at the news. And I was like, well, EA is the better opportunity. So I only traded EA. I take the best opportunities and I only focus on those for the week. Because if you look at the higher time frame, you can tell whether a pair has 50 pips left to go or 500 pips left to go. So I'm looking for the one that has the bigger, that's in a definite downtrend and I want to continue selling it. Something like I showed you, like AUD, USD, that's sitting at the bottom. I know that midweek I could see a reversal to the upside, so I might start looking to catch that buy midweek or when that news comes out. So I take what I call high probability trades. I'm not going to chase drunk junk when I know that I got some some prime that's sitting out there waiting to happen. So um, like if you go back and watch the first Zoom I did with Terrell Rowland, he talks about how he worked full time, traded two to three days a week, and made his first six figures in seven months. Um, and it was from trading two to three days a week, trading two to three pairs a week. He marked up everything, but he only traded the best opportunities. That makes sense. Thank you. All right. Hey, Gigi, um, how do you like decide for which periods of they'll give you the best opportunity? Um, like I said, if I'm on a higher time frame like that, UJ. Is sitting right there at the bottom. I wouldn't be looking to catch the last bit of that sell unless it was over 100 pips. Um, AUD, USD is sitting at the bottom. It only has like 50 pips to go, so I'm not, I'm not going to chase 50 pips. I'll wait and look at it later on in the week to see if I'm going to catch that reversal to the upside for 1,000 pips. I'm not worried about the sell. I'm going to wait for the buy. Uh, I, I wait for the bigger opportunities. If it doesn't have a couple hundred pips left to go, I'm not going to mess with it because it could reverse at any time. Okay, no, no problem. Thank you, Gigi. I have a question, Gigi. How you doing? I'm doing great. Question. Um, I understood what you just said. So would you do a sell, a buy limit, or you would just 
wait to see what it's going to do. Like if I very seldom do uh, limits. I have done them and they have worked out. What I do is set alerts. Oh, I will set, right. okay. if I know it's got 50 pips to go, then I'll set an alert to go off about 10 or 15 pips before that target price. Okay. I, we call it alert gel. We will put okay. a, a pair in jail. <laughs> so yeah. that alert goes off and wakes me up on my phone or on my computer. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kia, um, thank you for joining. This video will be on YouTube tomorrow. You just search Forex and chill, and I cover a lot of, if you look at the sessions with me and Clint Million on there, we cover a lot of beginner stuff. Um, Jamie, if you're talking, sweetheart, we can't hear you. That's why I keep talking, because you uh, must be muted. Oh, no, I was just waiting patiently. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how are you liking those uh, black and white candles in the gray yeah. background? I'm going to tell you that black and white has just changed me tremendously so i thank you and walter uh, for taking that time to share this concept of the black and white cannabis is taking away a lot of distraction um especially with you know the green and red i mean it's just like it would distract me from really what i need to be focused on so it took a lot of the emotion out of it so it, it, it's totally awesome i, I don't even like the black colors anymore <laughs> all right can you turn your mic up a little bit i heard you but I want to be able to hear you real good on the recording. Um, okay. Is this better? Yeah. Put the mic a little bit closer to your phone. Are you using your headset or not? Yes, I'm using my headset. Is this better? I think it sounds better when you don't. Try it without it. Okay. Try it. All right. Test one, two, three. Oh, my God. That's a lot better. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. All right. Great. Great. Yeah, I'm loving, I'm loving the black and white uh, candles. It, it takes a the distraction away from looking at the green and red because of the fact that, you know, we know green is good and red is bad. So it, it just takes it away. It takes, it, it helps out the mental. So I appreciate you just sharing that concept with us. Um, it, it's definitely helped my trading out tremendously in that short amount of time. But um, Gigi wanted me to talk to you guys about divergence. Uh, divergence is something that I just, definitely grabbed onto uh, like, like a fish to water. Uh, it just became real simple and easy for me to grasp onto it. So basically when you're looking at divergence, basically all divergence is is that momentum is going one direction, but price is going another. Again, momentum is going in one direction and price is going to another. So I'm going to actually show you what that basically means. So we're just going to mark up a basic chart, USD, AUD. And of course, you know, we're going to do what we do monthly, weekly, and daily. All right. We're going to go ahead and box in price and we're going to react to it. All right. So we got our support and we have our resistance here at the bottom. So then we're going to go ahead and go to our weekly. Hopefully we should see a divergence here on this one uh, we should and what i like to use is something called the magd so magd stands for moving average convergence divergence moving average convergence divergence all right so in looking at your monthly and your weekly daily and using your magd I mean, you could definitely have a powerful combination where you're seeing the divergence, all right? And basically, well, you know what? We have a divergence as we speak. But let me go ahead and finish marking up this chart. So we got our monthly, we got our weekly. As you can see here, uh, weekly, probably not much going on in the weekly. So let's look at the daily. Oh. But we definitely see something here on the daily. Go ahead and reset my chart. And yes, we have some good divergence sitting right here. Perfect. Perfect. Anyone see it? Let's see what we got here in the chat. Yes, sir. 
All right. Oh, somebody sees it here. Yes. All right. We see some. We see, somebody say yes. So I got two. Yes. All right. We got three. All right. Well, good. Let's go ahead and, and, and mark it out. All right. And always remember this, guys. The higher the time frame that you see a divergence, the stronger the trend reversal will be. I say again, if you find divergence on a higher time frame, the stronger the reversal will be. Just understand that you have to have patience when you see divergence on a higher time frame. It could take a week, it could take two weeks. As you can see here, we have price here. It's going, well, I should say momentum is going up, but price is going down. Does everyone see that? If you see that, put a one in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Outstanding, outstanding. So in looking at that on the higher time frame, the daily. Now understand the SB did we see this back in 2017, but it didn't actually move. It really didn't have the big change until oh what almost a year later. So in looking at that, look how much of a trend this changed. This market started going up and has not let down yet. So we're looking at being in a trade for how long? Jeez Louise. Looking at being in a trade for 520 days with 2,500 pips. Now, of course, that doesn't sound realistic, but you know that actually people who actually will leave a trade in and will not turn it away. All right. We will name who an individual is, but he is definitely big in IML. And he let a trade run for six straight months and made uh, approximately $130,000 off that trade. You want to find out who that is, you'll have to hit me up one-on-one -on -one and you can definitely see it. But convergence and divergence is sitting all over the place. All right, here's another. Convergence or divergence. Price is going up. Yes or yes? Yes. Outstanding. Yes. Yes. But if you're looking here, what is momentum doing? Is losing. Momentum, momentum going up or is it going down? You're losing momentum. We're losing momentum. So what do we believe? Do we believe momentum or do we believe what the market makers are showing us? Momentum. Exactly. We're going to believe momentum. So if we look at momentum, let me go ahead and mark this so we can really see what date that was. October. Let's go ahead and widen that out just a tad bit. Again, this is all off the daily. I don't know about you, but an extra 215 pips would do great for my pocketbook. Mine's two. <laughs> and that was in four days. Four days, nothing but blue. So let's go ahead and go down to the lower time frame. Let's do something a little bit more after. Let's look at the four of them. Wow. Do we see divergence? Yes. Yes, and sir. This happened recently. In three days, price was going down, but momentum it's was going, going up. up. Now, if you would have had patience on the four hour, and let's go ahead and mark this. I like marking charts. I like to know exactly where we're at in the market at all times. You pay attention. The market is going to tell you what she's going to do. We just have to be able to react to it. But that happened on July 18, 2019. Of course, we wouldn't enter off the four hour. Of course, we wouldn't. That wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. But we could, we could get in on a five minute or a 15 minute, correct? Yes, sir. So, and looking at that, that was 18 July. Let's go ahead and reset our charts. Let's go to 18 July. It's 18 July, we look for our marker. 
And looky here, looky here. Waited patiently for price to do what price is going to do because we cannot control price. We would have waited. This is where it would have came to. This is where we marked right here. Now understand, you're like, well, Jamie, that's not where you marked off at. You're correct. It's not where I marked off at because I was on a four hour. You have to understand in the four hour, it's going to take, if you're going down to the one hour, every candle on the one hour, it's going to take four candles to make one four hour candle. Yes or yes? Yes. It's so, yes. Exactly. yes. So then you will need to do the math on it for the five minute candle. Now, of course, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can just go ahead and do the mathematics. I would, I would definitely guesstimate right about here is when the change came. Another way you can find out that that is actually a good place to put your entry is because we had a what? What type of candle is this? A bullish candle. This is an engulfing bullish candle. Another reason it was telling you that it was going to be a change or a reversal in the market is something called a what? Uh, descending channel. Okay. Descending channel. That's exactly right. Well, I'm telling you, I think these Forex and Chill videos have definitely been working for you guys. That's exactly right. So the market gave you not only one with the descending channel, it gave you another verification because we had an engulfing candle. And when we have an engulfing candle, bullish engulfing candle, we believe in doing what? Impulse. Go back. Correction. 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 Continuation. Outstanding. So we had the what? We had the impulse. Yeah. We had the correction. Oh. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. We had a nice deep correction, didn't we? And continuation. And then we had the continuation. And that thing didn't just continue. That thing lost its dog on the <laughs> love and mind, right? And look what happened. If we go ahead and put this out, what did it tell you to get out the market? So that was your continuation. But what happens? You know it's got to go ahead and reset. So what did it have to do? It had to do another what? Flag. Go back. It had yeah. to do another correction. Not only did it do another correction, what did it tell you to get out? Oh my goodness, there's another correction. Now, just to go ahead and say for time's sake, how many pit moves was that when we did, you saw that on the four hour? A lot. Ah, uh, yeah, it was more than a lot. <laughs> it was more than a lot. So I'm going to go ahead just to save time. I'm going to go to the 15 minute. So that way you guys can see the bigger picture. See, we have to look for bigger moves. You know, the one thing about Forex, it tells a story, and it'll tell you a story about your life. It'll tell you a story about you. But the question is, are you willing to put in the work and the time to go ahead and pull 645 pips out the market in two weeks? I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I want to say thank you, not just to IML, but I want to say, say thank you to Gigi, Stevenson, Lindor, Terrell, and Clint, because they gave me a shot at the title. They gave my family an opportunity to change their life and change the Rogers last name for generations to come. And I hope you take this time and to be serious about your life and whatever your it is, put your it in your face so you can go ahead and not just do this, but do this even better than what we're doing. All we want to do is replace ourselves so you guys can do something different in your life. I want to thank Gigi for this opportunity to share this uh, concept called divergence. And if you guys need more training on this, please let Gigi know. We'll definitely make more time to do more training for you. I appreciate you, Gigi. Love you to death. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Gigi. Thank Jamie. you, thank you thank for you. Doing you. If it wasn't thank for you, Jamie. I wouldn't have learned divergence. Thank you and divergence. so much, Jimmy. Yeah. Divergence. <laughs> yeah, divergence is one of those things that can give you an edge because um, you see it happening right before your eyes. 
So um, I really appreciate Jamie bringing, uh, I always heard people talk about divergence, but I never paid attention to it until Jamie joined the team and, and brought it to my attention. So we've been going about two hours. If nobody else has anything, um, we'll answer any questions and call it a night. Um, it's a big, big Friday night uh, here in Alaska. It's only 8 p.m., but I'm going to study. I'm going to study and market my time. Hello. Uh, good evening. I have a question on um, entries. Uh, this is Nathaniel. Yes. Hello, Nathaniel. I'm fine. Good evening. I actually want to ask a question about entry. Entry on the 30 minutes. Because most of the time, I do see, um, I do my, make, mark up my charts on the four hour and the daily. So, and um, like, just as Ms. Linda has always said, it says you should jump down two time frames lower to to get your entry into the market. Hey, uh, uh, do you I, mind if I share my screen real quick? Uh, please do, ma'am. Okay, let's see. All right, so you want to know about dropping to a lower time frame? Well, I'll look at the for an entry. All right. Now, what you want to do, everyone who trades should have a list of confirmations that they want to be met before they take a trade. So I'll, I'll mark this up again from scratch since we can do it so quickly. Um, you want a list of trading confirmations. Everybody should have an index card or a, on the notepad or something with a reason why they're going to take a trade. You should never take a trade without knowing why. Somebody drops you a signal, you want to know why you are taking that sale or that buy, okay? So let's just look um, at a higher time frame here. All right, we're going to say we had this marked up, but we're going to look in the past, okay? If I look at my daily, even though it's choppy, I can see I'm moving in an overall downtrend. When this pulled back here to this, area this this hadn't happened yet so this right here was um something i didn't cover in the beginning for people who are new a demand zone is where people demand something they want to buy it a supply zone is where something is sold so let's just look at this and we're going to say that this has not happened yet okay so since that has never happened I know I'm coming back into my previous high. Here it sold, here it didn't make it up, here it sold, and here it's going back into that area again. So let's watch this on a lower time frame and get our trade confirmations. All right. And you see it started way back here. So let's speed it up a little bit. We're way off because I was on the daily. But it's going to make it back up there. Okay, let's just say we had got all the way back up to the top of the market. Right there. All right. Now I'm on my 15 minutes. So remember, on the daily, it's looking like a wick. But I'm on my 15 minute. I know I've come to a zone to where sellers normally take control of the market. So let's slow it down a little bit. All right, now, what did I just get? Let me turn on my confirmations here. My first confirmation is I'm at a sell zone. And my second confirmation, I just got a bearish engulfing candle. Here was my little fake out on the higher time frame. It's a wick. Let's see what it looks like. Look at the wick. That was that little area there that had broke us above. The higher we go, the more it turns into a wick. So confirmation number one, I am at a, a zone that sellers constantly take control of the market. Now on my lower time frame, I have a bearish engulfing, which is usually a reversal candle. Remember I told you at the beginning, these candles are important. The impulse is important, but what comes after the impulse is equally important. So let's see what happens here. I got my flag. I got a wick, which is a rejection candle. 
and still playing with my feelings a little bit. It's trying to trap people in the market. Now let's see, right here, I could have either drawn a flag like this and looked to get in. Now, Jamie just got through teaching us something important. What do we see going on at the bottom? Does anybody see anything? Divergence. Divergence. All right. So, how many confirmations do we have now? That's a, that's a four. Yep. That was right. about three confirmations. Cell zone. We got our fake out. We got an impulse, and now it's making a correction. And we got divergence. And guess what else is happening? My EMAs are crossing. So you can draw this right here. And I, one thing I'm going to show you what I've learned about divergence. Um, let's watch it. When it finally crossed my zero line to the downside, look what happened. And it broke my trend line. This right here was my trend line. So now it broke. It's pulling back into my MACD. Your stop loss would have been above your previous high. Let's see if it ever got taken out. Boom. And it's a go. So those were my reasons why I would have sold this pair. That makes sense? Yes. yes. Can you actually yes. look at uh, something that, um, yes. that shows a little bit of convergence as well so we can have a visual? Can you, Jamie? Convergence just means it's agreeing, like you have multiple confirmations that something has happened. Divergence was just on that MACD. Convergence was all your other signs. Right, that's exactly correct. Convergence is just what it says. It's converging, meaning it's, it's correlating, meaning it's correct. It's the same. Die, mm -hmm. meaning die, meaning directional difference. I got you. Uh -huh. like, now, see, it, it never took out, let's get to a higher time frame. It never took out our stop loss on our higher time frame. We're below the MACD. It came back, gave us some uh, support, I mean, some uh, a pull back there, and if we pull this back to the left, that's probably an area where it pulled back in the previous price. Always look left, and you see here it bounced off of that area. Here it rejected off of that area. All right, so there you go. Um, hey, Gigi. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the name of the uh, moving average? Does it have that change in some red to green? It's Hull, H U L L. H U L L moving average. Um, and I have mine set to 72, I think. Uh, 72. Okay, uh, this is a 72. This is a 72. Okay. I, uh, I just made them to match my 9 and 50. Okay. The 9 and 50 right. would do the exact same thing those do, it's just it changes colors. Okay. So that, uh, that was a good reason to get in that trade and you never saw a reason to ever get out. So right now, here's where we got in at the trend line break. We would be up. It fell 293, pulled back. So it'll probably get down here. 314 pip move. You could have stacked it after each pullback on your 15 minute. That makes sense. And y'all, this is how I learned so much about uh, what I do. I back test like the strategy I'm working with now, the new stuff I'm learning, I go back and I play it and see if what I'm doing would have worked. And, I, you know, you could do the same thing here and you probably had the same thing. You know, you had a downtrend. If you, if you go back and replay this, you'll probably see the divergence, then the impulse, the correction, and the continuation to the upside. And that's all you have to do. You just go here and um, you hit that replay button and back test. You want to learn how to trade, like put it right there before that happened. You know that you're in an area where buyers take control of the market. So we know we're going to enter on like a 15 minute. Let's see what we got. Broke. Now, if we look, here was your first impulse correction. Let's see if we had divergence there. Yep, you had divergence. 
your market was going down. Your, your divergence actually started way back there, but you can just put it here. And I've noticed that the impulse usually breaks out after it crosses over the zero line. Um, and it just took off. And again, if you watch it on a higher time frame, you'll see the whole move happened above well, the MACD. Okay. Well, had one pull back here and went back up there again. Mm hmm All right. Actually, um, my question is, my question is, when we are like now on this particular trade now, this ADSD, where it broke out. Actually, this is a, once it has not reversed on the higher time frame, then you should not just bother looking for entries on the lower time frame. Now, do I have to wait for this breakout on the four hour and the correction on this breakout and correction on the four hour before getting on this trade? Or once I know it's about, once I know it's on the sell zone. Now, once you become experienced enough, I'm experienced enough that I can catch it at the tip. Um, once you back test and become experienced enough, and you work on your entries, the more you work on it, the more you'll see the things that are telling you to get in. I mean, right now I'm telling you the safest way to get in to keep from losing your money. The other stuff, it don't, you only learn it from experience and watching the market over and over again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm teaching you the, the less risky way you know, multiple confirmations. Me, um, I'm more familiar with how the market moves and I'll, let's see, let's focus in on like right here. Um, I start looking at other things and I get early entries, but um, it's it comes with experience. It comes with constantly looking at the market. Oops. Yes, Gigi, I have one more question again. Right, right here, I would have seen my ascending channel. And when it wicked above that, annoying me, I would have probably got in and retested. And, you know, I would have just caught a few pips more, but, you know, you have to ask yourself, is it worth 25 more pips taking a chance? So on a more volatile pair, yes, I do it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, concern in the um, hall moving average right is it available for all account types or it must have a pro account or i really know? don't know i can't check it because i have a pro i don't know if it's available to everybody it might be available to everybody i don't think you have to pay for it i think somebody just created it and dropped it in there but i have a pro account so i can't check and see if the free account has it i know on the free account you can have three indicators so and i tell everybody that has a free account to have two moving averages in the macd that's all you need and and I was using the nine, the fifty, and the MACD. The nine and fifty would do exactly what that hole does, just doesn't change colors. All right. Uh, I have one more question, and that's it. Um, uh -huh. So, is the volume necessary if we're looking at momentum on the the MACD? Oh, uh, uh, the like, volume indicators. Yeah. The MACD, the MACD is a volume indicator. It okay. it includes. That's why I like it because there's three components to the MACD. Okay, let's look at the components for the MACD. All right, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna bring up both MACDs because some people like this one and some people like the one above. So we'll bring them both up. Okay, these colors here are called the histogram. When it's dark red, you have stronger selling power. When it starts getting light red into the light green, the bulls are taking over the darker green. Uh, they're losing momentum. It said so you're you're looking at the colors. The, this is stronger, and this is uh, weaker. So the darker it is, the stronger and the lighter it is, the weaker. And it's the same here. This is the histogram. You're red. When it's dark green, it's stronger. When it's light green, it's it's weaker, and vice versa. These are very. These move very similar to the nine and fifty. These are your um, moving averages down here. One's a signal line and one's a MACD line. Um, and I use the default settings. I don't change anything. It's the 12, 26, and nine, 12, 26. It doesn't have a nine. And that's why a lot of people use this one because if you're looking at those early entries, once you, you become more experienced, you'll be able to catch those early entries based on that and those pullbacks. But these both work the same. Um, I've gotten accustomed to not using them 
I only use them now for like divergence. Uh, nine out of 10, I don't use them. But when I was first learning to trade and I was first learning market structure, I relied heavily on these. Um, they're, they're the only indicator. The only indicator I really like is the MACD, the nine and 50. Um, my favorite tool is the Fibonacci. Other than that, I don't use anything. I don't use any bowl or stochastic or um, the cloud. I've used the cloud before. It works for some people. It's, it's indicators. So that's why it works so well. It's back tested by the man who wrote it. it took him 30 years to develop it. So but that's what it is. Uh, MACD, I love it because it shows you volume. It shows you how strong they're pushing up. And it also shows you momentum. Um, whether they're they're heavy in the market or light in the market. And it also shows you divergence. Convergence is when it's moving with the market. And there's a thing called hidden divergence that's getting a little more technical. It's like when they're doing a little something different, but it's letting you know there's a continuation. But I, I really haven't studied it a lot. It's out there. You can look at um, hidden divergence. will tell you that this is a flag and the flag is going to continue. And I think it's... Um, you can look at screenshots on the internet and it'll explain it all to you. I don't go too in depth with it because I don't really use it. All right, any more questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Gigi. You're welcome. I'm gonna get off here and do some studying, maybe watch a movie and uh, I challenge you all to mark up your charts tomorrow. Don't trade everything. Just take the high probability trades. And everything we've learned, like I said, if you use the IML harmonic scanner, um, we can apply these same rules there. If you'll go back and look at it, we only use the higher time frame on my team. And we apply these rules. And um, that looks like a good trade setting up on GN. So you can look at it. Just use it like for a signal, then go over here and mark it up. GBP and ZD. This is one good thing, one good tool. I have all my new people on um, on IML using. So let's mark this up from scratch. And this will be the last thing we do, and see if we agree. And I will tell you those patterns. If you if you follow the patterns, they're based off the Fibonacci sequence, which is why they work and they're so powerful. Wait, Gigi. Right. Gigi? Yes. If you could go back real quick on that pair on your markup for GN. Mm -hmm. Go back to what is this? The weekly, I think you put it. Um why 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 do you have it at that low part there? Why not the next level after that um third? Oh, this one or this one? No, go down. Because it's too, it's too close to my, it's no. already right here at the bottom. The next level here. Like this one? I'm gonna just... on. Hold on. Okay. I believe she's speaking the last level. You're yeah. talking about here? No, the next one down. Go down. Here? Nope, not on the candle, but the level. The next one. Here? The last one, the last one you drew on the bottom. This one? Yep. That one. Oh, that's my monthly. That's yeah. my monthly. That's the very last swing low. This was your last swing low on the monthly. Okay. Looking left, you don't see anything lower than that. Got it. And see, this is the weekly. Looking right here that's the most recent high and I've, I've explained this before and people laugh at me but when you're looking for swing highs and swing lows that's the only way i put it just imagine your middle finger it sticks up a little bit higher than the two fingers on the right and the left that's how you find your swing high and your swing low this here it sticks high you need to have two higher on the right and two higher on the left for it to be a swing high and a swing low it's like a middle finger sticking out basically that's the easiest way I could think to uh, not saying that I shoot birds to people because I would never do that. I'm a professional at all times, but <laughs> that's how, if you look, if you hold your hand up and you see the way your middle finger sticks out above your other two fingers, that's how you find your swing high and your swing low. See, and this isn't a swing low because you don't have two candles. So it's still going down here. This is a swing high because you have candles coming down on both sides. 
this is a swing high, you have candles going down on both sides. A swing low, you have candles going up on both sides. That makes sense? See, this isn't a swing low yet. Uh, what do you mean when you say by two candles going down the same side? What do you mean? All right, so they're calling for a sale. I agree with that because we are in a downtrend. And what they did, let's see what time frame are they on. They are on the one hour. So this is based off going on the one hour and drawing a Fibonacci. And there you have it. This would be your take profit one, two, and three. Well, that's all you need. If you look at that, that's just Fibonacci levels. They don't have it coming down as low as me, but I think it's going to come all the way back down because if we look at a higher time frame, um, if we take that Fibonacci off, go back to our four hour or our daily, that was just a correction. Um, if we had came here and drawn our little arrows out, you could even draw your little trend line out. Uh, do, we, do we have an, another block here? Say that again. Another block. Another block. Other block. Uh, we, we're not teaching that tonight. We're looking at um, support and resistance and the Fibonacci and why they call that. All right. And okay. now okay. we're selling it down to here. Me, if I took this trade, I would try to hold it all the way down to here. Even though they're calling it for... They're calling it for 198 pips. Um, you could potentially see from here, you could see another 500 pips if it goes back. Because if you look at your daily, um, you don't have a strong reversal like you did over here, okay? And it just came out to um, right here to this zone. All right. So it could hit, it could come down to here. If it breaks through, it's going to come down to here. It could come down to here, fake out, and go back up. But that's the next zone. That's the minimum that I would take it to is 352 pips. So I'll definitely be trying to get in that Sunday. So that's one of my trades for the week. <laughs> Hi, I have a question, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, your fibs, are you modifying the numbers on your fibs or is that default? Um, I have like I have different things. I, I test stuff. Um, so I'll, I can go to my fib and um, go to settings. Just like I change my different backgrounds. Uh, I have, uh, let's see, I forgot how I did it. Let's see, I have different fibs that I've saved and I test stuff. Um, just say GG and see how it changed it. So I just, I test different stuff. That's all. I test a lot of stuff until I get to what I think works for me. So now if I go and draw, you see it will look completely different. So these are my favorite settings right here. So it just depends on, on you know, what's on my screen at the time and if i see it's not the one i'm looking for i'll just switch it that's my 38 my 50 my 61.8 71 i added the 71 in there because i saw a couple people saying it was a good fib um usually i don't use this one i usually use the 272 because most of the time um on a retracement or an extension you'll get the 272 but yeah it's just it's whatever levels you are comfortable using. You can use the default. There's nothing wrong with the default. I, I, I tweak things and play with things until I get the result that, you know, what, what I like seeing on the market. Gotcha. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The only thing I don't, I don't ever change the MACD ever. All right. Anybody else? If not, I thank you all for joining on here tonight. This will be 
on uh, YouTube at some point tomorrow. If you're subscribed, you'll get a notification. If not, just go check tomorrow. Mr. Grant, um, he has a busy weekend. He has stuff he has to do, so I don't rush him to upload it. He um, he does it at his earliest convenience, so special shout out to him for always stepping up and helping me out with this. All right, everybody, we thank you for jumping on. Um, I'm not sure about next Friday. I might have a guest on or we might not have a Forex and Chill because I might be traveling back to Washington State to spend two weeks with my daughter and my grandchildren. So not sure yet if we'll have a session next week. But if so, always look on my page. I always drop the link there. All right. Thank you for jumping on. God bless you. I hope you make a lot of money this week. And have a good night. Thank you so much, Gigi. Love you. Love you too. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. 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 Thank you. You're welcome, everybody. Have a good night. Safe travels. Thank you. And enjoy your movies. Thank you. Bye. Right. Right.